Clifford. Welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. It's great to have you here today. How are you? Hey, Melissa, I appreciate you having me. I'm excited. Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Excellent. And tell us where you're located. I mean, you don't have to give exact longitude and latitude. You can if you like, but, you know, generally, where are you? If that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Nice. It's yeah. probably a little warmer there than it is here at the moment. It's a bit warm, yes. Yes, indeed. So, Clifford, you are an entrepreneur, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what do you do? Yeah, so right now I focus on helping entrepreneurs get their time back. Uh, the reason being, I, I want to influence 1 billion people. And the way, you know, you learn lessons along the way as you start taking actions and things. And one thing that I learned is entrepreneurs, they're innovative creative, caring people, and they look for solutions for others. And I also realized like, oh, if they have more time, it gives them more time to come up with solutions to help people move forward on their journey. So I really just focus on helping entrepreneurs get their time back because I know how valuable it is. It's the one resource that we can't make more of. Isn't that the truth? Mm-hmm. So a lot of us aren't entrepreneurs, but I would think that a lot of what you have to share would be transferable to most of the things that we do in life. Yeah. Yeah. I always say it's the things that entrepreneurs do are the same things that a uh, corporations do, the same things that high athletes do if they're doing it at the best of the best. Uh, it comes down to loss you know, laws and principles. And when you figure out how to apply the laws and principles, they're transferable to whatever profession you're looking to go into. You know, and a lot of that, you know, comes into play in the family too. Our families aren't a business, but sometimes it's some of those same skills that gets us through all of the things that we need to do, all of the school things, all of the uh, being ready and having clothes and all of the planning for events, birthdays, special celebrations, the holidays that come up, a lot of that is the, the encompass the same skills that we use in the, our work lives. Yeah, 100%. That's coming from a uh, family man, married and with two two little ones. We're <laughs> <laughs> really true on that. Yeah. And I am all about saving some time and working more efficiently. So I am eager to hear what you have to share. Yeah. But before we get into that, you mentioned being a professional athlete. And that was once how you earned your living. You were a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I used to be uh, an MMA fighter and I had the opportunity to fight in the UFC. I had the opportunity to fight in Bellator. So I fought in some of the highest promotions and fought with uh, some of the fiercest competition. And that will teach you a thing or two about uh, prioritizing. Because <laughs> that's, that's the name of the game. Yeah, when we, when we prioritize correctly, uh, we'll even surprise ourselves. That's the cool thing. And so uh, going through that process, I got to surprise me in some ways. And I got to, to surprise my coaches in some ways. And the athletes that I trained with in other ways. So it was a lot of fun. It was a great journey. So I have to ask, what is it like to be a professional fighter? I mean, I have a picture in my mind of what you might do every day. And I don't yeah. think that's probably what the truth is. So yeah. what's a typical day like in the life of an MMA fighter? Yeah, so um, you're looking to perform at your highest level. So you're being really cautious what you put in your body. Uh, you're also being really cautious on, on the exercise routine that you do and the things that you think about because our mind can be our best friend or our worst enemy. Um, I've always done a good job at training my mind to be my best friend. A lot, a lot of practice and also had some uh, bumps in the road when I was younger. So those bumps in the road ended up uh, helping me uh, interflect with life and see like, all right, 
Uh, this is what I'm given. What am I going to do with what I'm given? And so that, that really helped me on my, my professional fighting journey as well. Um, and you go through the process, you know, you're, you're learning. And the most important thing I tell people to do is just be in life, be the best that you can be in the moment that you're being it. Because eventually you start, pick, you, you pick the skill sets up, you pick the abilities up and it, you get to choose how you're going to use them, you know, and I always wanted to use my skills and my abilities to be the best person that I could be. You know, I, I didn't want to be a high level fighter and say, now I can be a jerk because I can beat everybody out. <laughs> like I wanted to be <laughs> someone who could be my best for my best and, uh, help others pursue being the best for them, their best, you know, and I didn't know it at the time, uh, people look up to discipline and they look up to, uh, integrity. Well, I knew integrity was important, but I didn't know they look up to integrity, but they also look at it in a way like I can't obtain that. I'm not disciplined. That person's disciplined. And it's like, no, I'm just as human as anybody else. And there's ways to go about it. You know, maybe you're, maybe you're telling yourself the wrong story. Or maybe you just have the wrong habits and you have to condition yourself into having new and different habits. And, uh, yeah. So when I went through that process, it was, it was kind of business as usual. Cause I had been building those habits for so long. You know, I did it in a, I was a coll collegiate wrestler, a high school state champion, and I knew there was a process and I was just ready to put in the process. And I even told my coach, I wanted to fight in the UFC in less than a year. And yeah, I wish I could have showed you the side eyed look he gave me because he didn't think it could happen. He's just like, there's no way that's going to happen. And we ended up doing it under 10 months. So, you know, you believe in yourself enough and you remind others to believe in you enough and you just keep putting in the reps and you'll surprise them and surprise yourself a little bit along the way. Now, would, the, would there be a a different type of training, like a day-to-day -day training, and then a different type of training as you were ramping up for a fight, per se? Yeah, it's interesting. Well, that's a good question. So ultimately, if you're not, you can't pick up a new skill set when you're in fight camp, or it's at least dangerous to do, because now you're in fight camp. You want to sharpen the skill sets that you already have. Um, right. So... When you're not in fight camp, uh, I'm just experimenting, trying new things, uh, focusing on what, when I'm focusing on boxing, I'm focusing on boxing fully. When I'm focusing on jujitsu, I'm focusing on jujitsu fully. I'm focusing on whatever the thing that I'm doing is. Like, I think it's really important to be present in what you're doing. You can learn faster doing that way because you're doing it with intentionality. Um. And I listen to my body too. If I don't feel like boxing a certain day, I'm going to listen. And I'm going to question it for a second because, like I said, our minds can be our best friends or our worst enemies. And our mind will creep in and try and get us to be a little bit lazy. And we got we to gotta call ourselves on that crap and just be like, mm -hmm. do I really not feel it? Or is my mind just trying to have me be lazy right now? <laughs> and I'll kind of test it a little bit just to see and be like, oh no, I'm really not feeling it. Cause you can overtrain yourself too. You know, there's such a thing as overtraining. Sure. So going through the process, um, yeah, I didn't have like a set routine of Mondays on boxing, Tuesdays I'm doing jujitsu. I, I kind of did, but I also flowed with my routine depending on how my body felt in the moment that I felt it. Now, when it's time to get, when it's game time and you sign that contract and you got three months on uh, that sprint time. So that's when you're sharpening up the skills you already have. And you might, you might learn one or two tricks, uh, while you're going through that camp, but you're focusing on sharpening, being ready, being conditioned, uh, and being prepared for what you're looking to get ready to do. You know, I grew up. Well, I grew up in the 80s, and of course, the iconic fighting movies in my growing up days was Rocky, and I'm sure you get tired of comparisons to this, and I do apologize for that, but that's my only reference, really, so um, 
I do have the question. One, did you ever chase a live chicken down a Philadelphia street? Uh-huh. And <laughs> then two, my actual more serious question then is, um, I can see the wisdom and what you're saying is that you don't try new things in the fight because you perform as you practice. Yeah. You know, I've always heard that phrase, practice makes perfect, but I think it's practice makes permanent. That however yeah. you practice is going to be how you perform. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I hear you talking about as you prepared for a fight. Yeah. So I love the Rocky reference. I was all about Rocky. So you're you're perfectly good in that. And uh, no, I never have chased a chicken down the street, although it would be quite fun. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah practice how you perform i i like calling it a perfect practice makes perfect because i know like people are looking they say practice makes perfect not necessarily because if you're practicing incorrectly you're practicing the wrong thing and if you're practicing the wrong thing you're going to do the wrong thing when it's time to perform so i go uh perfect practice makes perfect and it's not to say you're going to get it perfect right out the gate but all perfect is All perfect is, is I'm doing it as perfect in the moment that I'm doing it. Like I even like challenging perfectionists, like, oh, I'm a perfectionist, so I can't do it. Like that's a cop out. The reason being is because you can only be as perfect in the moment that you're doing it. And the only way you can grow into a new level of perfection is by taking the necessary action. So you're not a perfectionist. You're just finding a loophole to say, oh, that's why I can't do this. That's great. Thank you for that. And, you know, as I hear you describe it, that's true in sports. It's true in music performance, any kind of artistry, but also I would imagine it's true in business as well, that if you get lazy in any aspect of business, whether it's making sales calls or writing copy or whatever it is, that that's going to carry through when it's the critical moment, when you're in the room, so to speak. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I ultimately so, tell people, um, it's all about taking the action, but knowing why they're taking the action too. So I, I know people get stuck. I know sometimes it gets hard, and we all have our own BS in our mind that keeps us like ah. I can't do that, but I can do this. Like, no, we can do whatever we want to do. And you just have to believe that you can do it. And you do have a story playing in your head. Yeah, you do have a story playing in your head. So if you're, if you're feeling stuck, like you can't do it, don't will yourself to just do it, but ask yourself, well, how or who or, or what, like, what can I do? There's a solution in there. You just have to look for the solution sometimes. Yeah. And again, we come back to discipline and integrity. And those things show up in the moments when we're alone, usually, and struggling. Those moments of, (laughs) we don't want to do this, or I don't think I can do that. Those are the moments when it really shows up, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about uh, making my mind my best friend instead of my worst enemy. Wow, that was powerful. Yeah, yeah. Our, our mind's there to work for us, not against us, not to keep us in this stuck, average, uh, my life's okay. Like, no, I I don't want to play that game, and I don't want people around me to play that game. Yeah, right. Imagine the conversations we could have in our communities if we lived that truth every day, right? Yeah, yeah. I And it's in every one of us. You know, that's the funny thing. Uh, ultimately, we want those great things. And sometimes maybe life's hit us really, really hard. And so we're just <laughs> like, ah, I tried, but. And it's like, yeah, we can let go of the but. We don't need to hold on the butt. Not if it's not if it's not serving us anymore. Heard it here first, folks. Let go of the butts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
So Clifford, help us to, how can we do more of what we love to do, of what we're really, what gets us fired up to do, and how do we delegate all of the other stuff? I mean, that's not saying that we don't have to do the stuff we don't like. That's just part of life. I get that. But give us some insights on how can we can focus on our strengths and build from that. Yeah. So it always starts with asking the question, okay, where do I want to be? Like, what do I want? And then saying, okay, I know what I want and what don't I want? Mm -hmm. You know, getting really, really clear on both on what I want and what I don't. And you go, okay, well, who has what I do want? And who also has what I don't want? Let me see if I can connect with them somehow. So now I start talking about guides. And the truth is everyone's a guide in something, right? Like you can teach me something and I can teach you something. Now the question is, do I want to learn that thing? You may be a bit better baker than I am. I'm not very good at baking stuff. Somehow I made a chocolate cake that tasted like cornbread. I didn't even know that was possible, but I figured it out. I was like, wow, it looks like so chocolate I am cake. never going to turn down good cornbread. Yeah, yeah. I just want to put that like, out there. It was really good, but it definitely wasn't like, it did taste like chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, well, right. I mean, it tastes like good cornbread. I don't know how I pulled that one off. But it's like, okay, well, who can guide me in this process? And now what's even cooler is I go a guide, a guide, and a guide. And I call it a third, a third, and a third. So who's where I want to be? And how can I connect myself to, to those who are where I want to be? And now there's another piece of, okay, who's where I'm at? Because I want some, I want other people who are like me, in my situation, I want a tribe to work with. So who's where I'm at? And then go find those people and connect with them. And then I say, to even take it a step further, who's where, I, where I'm at, but they want to be where I'm at? Like who wants, who wants my service, my guidance, my wisdom? Because when you get better at teaching others how to get things, you actually get better at taking on information too. Because you realize the process is not that easy. If I just told a person like, all right, this is what you do as an entrepreneur to get your time back. And I just gave you the steps and say, all right, good luck. Or everybody would have their time back and we'd never have a problem. Right. But there's a series of transformations that have to occur. It's the transformation that people are looking for. Yeah. When they can transform into a new experience and a new and see things in a different lens and become a different person just for seeing it differently. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, and then I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll take this and I'll take this. And then you let momentum carry. So it creates a win for everybody. Now, Clifford, it sounds to me like you were describing your own journey a little bit. Oh, yeah. I tell you, we're all a uh, part of the same journey. It's so hilarious. And um, there's, there's a thing called the hero's journey, where you go through a process and you come out the other end completely different. And the thing is, I've just been good at going through those processes again and again and again. Like the fighter's journey and the entrepreneurial journey is much the same thing. Mm -hmm. But people will take like, okay, you're punching, you're kicking, you're dodging versus, okay, you're marketing to a certain audience. You're, you're talking to the right person. You know their pain points. You know what they want. You know what the solution is. You know you have your price on point. You, you know, you can serve them at the highest level. You have your irresistible offer. So they're both the same in different aspects. Because if I just told a person like, yeah, all right, to be a good fighter, just go punch and kick someone, knock them right out. Don't let them punch and kick you though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur would be like, yeah, you know, what you want to do is, um, 
leverage your time so you don't destroy your family. Just so you know, mm. just go do that. We just talked about habits, right? We just talked about practice. And we become what we practice. So when we practice, whether we're practicing a good thing or practicing a bad thing, we're practicing something. And sometimes yeah. we don't even know what we're practicing. <laughs> exactly. So what kind of challenges did you have in particular on your journey to becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I'll tell you. The first time I, uh, the first time I fought, could have sworn I knew exactly what it was. Okay, two guys punching each other. I was way off. It was one guy hitting a lot of air, which was me. <laughs> me taking unnecessary punishment that I didn't want to take. Entrepreneurship felt much the same. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Wait, this is yeah, familiar. let me get this to try. I'm like. It's like fighting all over again, just psychologically <laughs> getting punched into that physically. And, um, but again, it comes down to that discipline, uh, the will to keep moving forward. Uh, the smile on my face, that really never goes away. Now, I did burn out. I did burn out. And uh, I think you almost have to a little bit to learn the really get the lesson to sink in. And mm -hmm. I realized I was like, wow. Oh, I got to get better at this. I'm like, I got to, yeah. I got to make this better than it was before. Uh, so when I went through that process, I, I was doing the third, a third and a third, and you just get better at doing it. You know, you get better and better at doing it because you realize as you're going through it, who your guides need to be. You know, sometimes you think your guide is, oh, they, they know the way they know how to get to where I want to get to. But if the personalities don't mesh, so that's going to make it hard. That's going to make it yeah. hard. It's going to cause friction. And so it's like, oh, well, now I need the personality to mesh. And then you go through that and you're like, oh, well, now I need the core values to mesh. Now I need the culture to mesh. Like it's all of those pieces coming together. And I, and I tell people, I always say, get as excited as you can because you're, you're one step away from meeting that person who's going to change your life. That's what it mm -hmm. comes down to. No, you're describing the entrepreneurial journey, but everything you just said can be applied to so many different things in life, whether we're talking about a marriage relationship or we're talking about a group relationship, say, uh, if we're part of a church community or part of any other group that we're a part of. It's yeah. all about listening to our core values, uh, matching the personalities, finding the chemistry and leveraging all of that so that you can create something that you have all agreed to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And I love that that wisdom is so transferable because, well, one, for people that are simple like me, I don't have to remember a whole lot of different things. It's the same principles that are present in all the aspects of life. And two, it takes so long to master that set of principles that Thank goodness that it's the same ones that are there and everything. And it just keeps coming back to mindset. You know, like you mentioned earlier, the space between our ears really gets us. It'll shoot us forward or hold us back. Like you said, if it's our best friend or our worst enemy. So what three tips can you give us as we kind of wind down here a little bit? What three tips can we use to make our minds our best friends? Yeah, it's a great question. So, one, know what moves you forward. Know what inspires you and talk about it. You know, have gratitude with yourself. Be thankful for the things that you have. Uh, know what holds you back. Know what keeps you stuck. And then take the action to get unstuck. Because you're going to condition your mind every time it gets unstuck with something, it's going to start seeing opportunities everywhere. Because it's like, oh, wow, we get unstuck every time we get stuck. This is awesome. And the mind's <laughs> going to look. And also, be observant. You know, be willing to, to look at yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you're not judging it. You're not beating it up. But you're looking at it 
and saying like, okay, if I want something, there's a way to get it. There's an action that I can take to make it a reality. Even if I'm an overly angry individual, or maybe I am drinking too much, or maybe I'm overindulging in food, or maybe I'm being abusive to family members, like psychologically or even physically, whatever it may be, observe it, look at it, be willing to look at it and say, oh, I want to change this. Or if it's, I'm not spending time with the people that I love and I cherish. You know, part of the reason I, I got into getting entrepreneurs their time back is because I saw like entrepreneurs weren't making time for their families. And it's, it's, it's a cop out to say like, I, I got it. I got to sustain this. I got to work hard. Like, no, we're, we're getting taught to do that because the Netflix president found a way to keep his family and it's Netflix. So it's, it's just one of those things that says, no, it, it's in your head. It's in your head to believe that, no, I have to do it this way. No, everybody has the same 24 hours. It's just how you use those 24 hours. A lot of wisdom there, Clifford. Thank you so much. Yeah. So thank how you. do people find out more about you? How do we connect with you online? Yeah, yeah. So you can find me on LinkedIn under Clifford Starks or uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook itself, Clifford Starks. And uh, I also am pretty relevant on Messenger as well. So if you want to connect with me, reach out to me. Yeah, I love to learn about whoever you are out there and uh, what your story is. Because if I can move you in the right direction, great. And if I can point you in the right direction, great. I just want to see people win. Awesome. All of those links will be in the show notes. And folks, as you're listening in or watching on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment, ask a question, keep the conversation going. Uh, let us know what, uh, ask Clifford whatever questions that you would like to know about him. And let us know what you liked about this episode. Clifford, thank you so much for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it.